Uh, welcome everybody, my name is Maria Piñango and on um, behalf of the organizing community for Renew Flux, we are excited that you are here and to begin this retreat uh, for the next uh, two days and a half. In your programs, you, there is, uh, it says that uh, Professor Alan Gerber, he's the Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Sciences for the University, will be giving the uh, welcoming words. He uh, was not able to make it, but we have his picture. <laughs> and he did send words, and the words say, I am sorry that I'm not able to meet you in person, but from the FAS Dean's office, welcome to Yale. The Yale Dean's office is very pleased to be sponsoring Meaning in Flux 2019. Like its previous edition, Meaning in Flux 2017, it has a great lineup. Very best wishes for a productive and enjoyable conference. That's it, those are his words. And what I wanted to say on our end is that it is indeed the case that his uh, support for this conference has been, uh, from the beginning, uh, uh, extremely open. You know, the only thing that has been required uh, of me is to say, you know, provide a budget. And then he says, whatever we can do, we will support you. And so, if he were here, I would probably not be able to say this, uh, not be saying it, but now that he's not here, I can say it. So, um, but I, these words that I, you know, these opening words, is really about uh, all of the people who have contributed for the past, uh, certainly for the past year and a half, but uh, also since the first uh, edition of the Mini Flux, to make this the conference that we want. And the, I start with the scientific committee. Uh, this is you know, it's an unpaid uh, job. <laughs> Uh, and it's uh, quite um, demanding in the sense of um, uh, we send them the, the, the abstracts and they have to send us back their, their um, uh, comments uh, and also uh, comments about revisions about for improvement if they think that this is the conference for that paper. So our so we don't it's not a yes or no in the in the traditional sense, it's rather is this a good fit? This is this paper a good fit? And that's um, and that's a different kind of mentality that one has for for when one reviews. So that's uh, the, the scientific committee this year has been Claire Bowen, Antonio Branco, uh, so Claire Bowen, Yale, Antonio Branco, Lisbon, Catherine Davidson, Harvard, Ashwini, Dale, Ohio State, Catherine Franich, Delaware, Roberta Golinkov, Delaware, Arhiro Katsika, Santa Barbara, myself, uh, Jenny Pyers, Wellesley College, Federico Rosano, San Diego, Paula Rubio, uh, MIT, Petra Schumacher, Cologne, Jason Shaw, Yale, Heike Visa, Humboldt University, and Alan Yu. That's it. They don't get paid, but at least they get paid. <laughs> then there is the organizing committee, um, within, which is composed of this amazing energy of people uh, who've been uh, working um, to make this everything that you probably will see, and hopefully you will enjoy it. So they are Sara Babinski, Karima Chopra, Madalina N, who's not from the linguistics department, and that gets an extra an extra thumbs up, Martin Fuchs, uh, Randy Martinez, Catalina Borges, uh, Josh Phillips, myself, Jason Shaw, Jisoo Sheen, and Manuel Cuadros, Kate Stanton from the philosophy department, Nanyan Wu, and Andy Chang. So what brings us together? And let me read, because this is stuff that, uh, it's the, what, the words that are here are the results of conversations from the committee as like, why do we want this? And um, I was telling uh, um, uh, Jennifer Cole earlier that one of the properties of this conference a couple of years ago is that everybody kept saying, I'm the auto ball in this conference. And everybody was saying that. And that actually is, I, I think, is, is a telling of the, of the kind of uh, environment we want to create, which is we are not coming here to, um, we are coming here to explore the boundaries of what we are doing and get, and get pushback from that and, and hopefully also support. So meaning, uh, examined through meaning and sound, examined through development, variation, and change, leads to converging observations. If so, these domains serve as potentially mutually constraining forces. So in the 2017 edition, we were dealing exclusively with meaning and maybe sometimes syntax. 
in the uh, in the ESA edition we've added sound, and by sound we mean phonetics phonology. Whatever you make of that, that um, because meaning cannot live without sound. So the questions that we want to but that we're setting up for the whole thing is how could those domains, uh, development, creation, and change, be understood as forces? We're saying they are forces. What does that mean? How could those forces work? What is the architecture of language that results from this interplay? And what is the architecture of cognition that, that such interplay suggests? So we are going small and then bigger, bigger, bigger. All of, their, all of them ambitious questions uh, and all of us in a way trying to, to say, well, a little bit in this part of the corner of this whole space, I think I can say this. And what are the byproducts that we hope to get from this? Uh, to help, to contribute to dissolve methodological barriers. We tend to, you know, entrench ourselves in these in this, uh, spaces where we say, well, I only do this, and this is the way, and this is, the, uh, and this is my way. And what we're saying is, you know, every way uh, ultimately helps. So let's not focus so much on that, but rather see how they contribute. And then support each other in the inquiry. Meaning and flux topics are development, variation, change, meaning and mind, pronunciation and meaning, and meaning structure. And the talks come from all of these places, distributed in more or less this way. <laughs> um, so just something for us to place us in the larger schema. So let me tell you a little bit about our uh, poster. So in 2017, we uh, developed a poster which, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, which had a specific uh, properties. So first of all, the poster was designed by Justin Moore, who was a Yale uh, linguistics graduate. That's him. And he currently works as a product designer and Spanish language copy editor at Amplify Education. He worked on light verbs for his senior essay, light verbs in Spanish. Um, and the typeface of, the, of this, not only of the 2017, but of the, of the current one, is, uh, the, is the Yale typeface, designed by Yale School of Art faculty member Matthew Carter. It incorporates in its design many of the formal characteristics of the old style typefaces used in Yale publications since the 18th century. And finally, the final design draws inspiration from black and white illustrations of ribbons in motion from the Italian architect and graphic designer Franco Brignanis. And this was it. Um, so, <laughs> so um, let me tell you, so at the time, uh, there was a, you know, we, we chose files, actually this, we were looking for a shape, a geometric shape, that could embody what we were after without fully knowing what we were after, right? So you have an idea, but you don't fully understand what is it. And uh, in reading this, uh, in reading this description about spirals, um, uh, we saw that that was the, that was the right, the right, the right shape. So according to Stephen Bradley from the Visual Design, Visual Grammar Shapes, a book on visual grammar, on visual grammar shapes, um, spirals are expressions of creativity. They are often found in the natural growth pattern of many organisms and suggest the process of growth and evolution. Spirals convey ideas of fertility, birth, death, expansion, and transformation. They are cycles of time, life, and the seasons. Spirals move in either direction and represent returning to the same point on life's journey with new levels of understanding. They represent trust during change, the release of energy, and maintaining flexibility through transformation. I thought that was lovely. Um, this is this year's. And um, this is what the reason, so Justin again helped us in figuring this one. 
Um, and uh, his take on this is the following. So his update to this year's design, which continues to draw inspiration from the black and white illustrations of Italian constructivist uh, Franco Brignani, reflects the variability and stability of the ever-fluctuating nature of language and semantic change. That was the idea. Um, and as you will um, see in everything, so it has it, it's in your name tags, and it's in this uh, object that, um, we, that we've been told is called the lollipop, which is uh, whenever we are going to go from building to building, and there we, we will when we go to certain um, other activities, there will be somebody with a sign, with a flux, with a thing, that thing is called the lollipop. So it's even the lollipop. So whenever you see this, that means that that's where you're supposed to be. <laughs> Um, and uh, one, of, uh, one of us, Nanyang Wu, um, developed this uh, world map. And um, it only, so what he did was just take all of the abstracts that were, uh, that are going to be, you know, for talks that are going to be presented here, and this is what came out. So a lot of children, a lot of words, a lot of use, a lot of meaning and context and verb and linguistic and language and English, etc. And different. Okay, so some notes before we start, start. This is just a very thing. <laughs> um, first of all, that uh, we really are looking forward to making this have the feel of a retreat. And there, are, there is a cost and an opportunity. The cost is that it is taxing. You know, we are gonna feel tired, and I, my expectation is that by Saturday, whoever does it the whole time is gonna feel taxed by it. Um, but one of the things that we also notice is that if, if it's um, this uh, environment of retreat-like, it's um, maximized when we minimize outside screens. So we understand that sometimes people cannot, you know, have to email and do stuff. But if you can, just um, let the screens out and let's just so that your mind can be here. The other thing is that we have tried to provide the best food that we could afford, uh, given the funding, and uh, in that we are doing so uh, with a local approach. So for those of you who are not familiar with New Haven, these names are not gonna mean much, but uh, hopefully you will get to recognize them as the weekend goes through. So we have participants called G, Juicy Kitchen, Takeaway, Dalenia Pizza, Marjolaine's, House of None, and Counterway, which is a local craft beer maker. Um, and uh, the idea was to um, involve also the city of New Haven uh, in the process of being here. We're also going to be doing a reusable, a low waste approach. And by that we mean we are using glass cups. And so we are providing you with masking tape and Sharpies so that you can write your, um, your name on it and then keep your cup throughout the day. Uh, and most of the food that we're gonna be doing is gonna be finger food, so we're gonna go a cappella with the food. And, um, and so, so, that, so that we can be as low waste as we can. We will be moving locations from some of the activities. There is, they are not complicated, but we do need to uh, stay, co stay together for some of them, for at least one of them, because it has, happens in the college, for which you have to have a uh, uh, you have to have card entry. And so stay connected. Um, don't, don't go wander off too much. <laughs> ah, we are recording all of the talks uh, and discussions and streaming uh, the conference on the Department Linguistics Facebook page. Department of Linguistics Facebook page. So the good thing is that your friends and family can see you, uh, but also that's a bad thing. <laughs> your friends and family can see you. And uh, so just be mindful of it. <laughs> okay. Um, and so now I, I get to say thank you to the funding uh, people and the supporting people and institutions. So first one was the grant from the National Science Foundation, um, who very, uh, who were just extremely supportive in saying, yes, this is a kind of conference that we want, we think should happen, and gave us money for that. The Yale Social Sciences Office, who, as I said earlier, uh, uh, um, also provided uh, some part of the budget alongside uh, the Yale Department of Linguistics. 
Pearson College. I happened to be a fellow in Pearson College, and uh, they were extremely kind in allowing us to have our um, uh, end of a retreat party on Saturday afternoon. Uh, and uh, so, and then that's it. They just opened their doors for us. And also the Macmillan Center, where we are going to have dinner tomorrow night. And your registration fee. <laughs> yes. Very good. Thank you for that. So um, that, that means uh, thank you for coming and for bringing your ideas and your energy to this retreat. So now let me tell, let me turn to the plenary talk one. And for plenary, for for the four speakers that we have invited uh, for this conference, um, there are two things that uh, we asked of them. <coughs> three things. One is that. They are going to be moderators at some point, uh, and and that they um, so they're going to be so that as an opportunity and a public opportunity for them to interact with the speakers of the session, uh, and they of course will have very probing and questions. Um, the other one was to uh, provide us with one-liners uh, for uh, and uh, this is what the one-liner is not. So. Uh, this came just this last week from the New Yorker, and it says, so this is career day, and this guy is uh, the, the person in the front saying, of course, it was through my efforts that we landed the account, but did I get any credit? Ha! Don't make me laugh. That's not what the one-liner is supposed to be. <laughs> what we thought the one-liner was, and all of the speakers so far have given us that, is something that can, can be constructive or less constructive. It's okay. Um, sometimes anonymity gives you space for less constructiveness. Uh, to the extent that you are here, this is us telling the speakers, you survived it or profited from it, so the story ends well. Anecdotes like this, we believe, uh, and have found, humanize the speakers to young researchers in particular and contribute to making of the speakers models for how to approach the craft. So with that, I turn to uh, the, our first speaker for today, who is Professor Herbert Clark from Stanford University. And why did we invite him? Because he's been uh, extremely influential in his ideas about meaning communication in the context of language comprehension, which, and this is crucial, have withstood the ebbs and flows of theoretical frameworks. Um, this, in part, they have, his ideas uh, have been extremely influential in the work that we've been developing in the lab. So it was with great um, uh, gratefulness that we uh, saw that he agreed to come here. And that's it. So now we are turning uh, turn the microphone to Professor Kirk. Thank you. 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 Thank you.